Today is the Feast of Christ the King, and uh, today's Gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46, the scene of the Last Judgment. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me. Naked and you clothed me. Ill and you cared for me. In prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the last Sunday of the liturgical year on the new calendar, and we are celebrating the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. The feast was originally established in 1925 by Pope Pius XI uh, to foster the social reign of Christ, especially in the, in the face of the rising crises of communism, Nazi socialism, and the persecution of the church, especially in Mexico. But we could ask a question. What sort of king is he? After all, he was born in a bar borrowed stable, not a palace. He preached from a boat when he gave his authoritative decrees. He did not give them from a throne. He was rejected by his subjects, executed as a felon, and buried in a borrowed tomb. We know from the Gospels that Jesus himself rejected the title of the king, at least in a political sense. But during his passion in St. John's Gospel, Pontius Pilate asked him, So you are a king? And Jesus answered, It is you who say that I am. However, Jesus also declared that his kingship was not of this world. Christ's kingship is a revelation and actuation of that of God the Father, who governs all things with love and justice. The preface of the Mass for Christ the King says, speaks of an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. The Father entrusted to his Son the mission of giving mankind eternal life by loving it to the point of supreme sacrifice. And at the same time, he conferred upon him the power of judging humanity, since he made himself Son of Man. So what sort of king is this? He is a king who is for us. Unlike worldly rulers who think that others should serve them and do their bidding, Jesus is a king for whom to reign is to serve. Throughout his earthly life, he exercised his authority, not as power, but as service. He served the sick, the possessed, the lepers. He was a king who received tax collectors, prostitutes, and sinners, embracing them not with severity, but with compassion. He is a king who washed his subjects' feet, and in the end, who laid down his life for his subjects. He is a king unlike other kings. So what sort of king is this? He is the king who overcomes the power of sin and death from the inside, who attacks this power at the, its deepest root, who allowed himself to be crushed by all the concentrated sin of the whole human race from the beginning of time to the end of time, who is literally killed by this sin, but who nevertheless wins a definitive victory over sin and death through his passion, death, and resurrection. At Calvary, it is revealed what type of king this is. He is the king of love. What sort of king is this? He is a king who identifies himself with the least of his brothers and sisters, 
not with the greatest. He is a universal king. And today's gospel, which we just heard, the Last Judgment, insists precisely on the universal kingship of Christ, the just judge, with the stupendous parable of the Last Judgment so wonderfully depicted in Michelangelo's Last Judgment scene in the Sistine Chapel. The Last Judgment comes just before the Passion in St. Matthew's Gospel. The images and the language are simple and clear. They are at the heart of the Gospel. They reveal the truth about our ultimate destiny. We will be judged on the basis of our love for the least of our brothers and sisters. They give us the criterion by which we will be evaluated. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me and so on. Who does not know this passage? Even simple children understand its meaning. It is part of the very fabric of what it means to be a Christian. What sort of king is this? He is the king who will come to judge the living and the dead at the end of time. His criterion for judgment will be objective. How have we loved the least of our brothers and sisters? He is the king who calls his subjects to love the least and to serve him in doing so. He reminds us that to reign is to serve and to serve is to reign with him. If instead each person thinks only of his or her own interests, the world can go into ruin. And quite frankly, we see these patterns of selfishness already. But the kingdom of Christ is not of this world, but it brings to fulfillment all the good that exists in man and in human history. If we put love of neighbor into practice, we make room for God's dominion and his kingdom is realized among us and the kingdom of the evil one is beaten back. There are so many people though who would simply want to reduce the Christian faith to good works, to social justice and activism, as if the church was some NGO or social service organization. The church rather is the people of God, founded by Christ to mediate his presence in the human reality. And our human reality is a world of suffering. Marxist socialists tried to reduce faith to nothingness and to just focus on equality for all, justice and activism, but they tried that project and it failed miserably, depriving the human person of his freedom and dignity. We saw that in the last century. Christian faith calls for individuals to bend the knee before Christ the King, to acknowledge him as Lord of our life, to be the King and center of our hearts and of our family, and in the end, to surrender our will to his. What sort of king is this? Well, the scriptures also refer to him as the Prince of Peace. He is our ally in the great spiritual battle. St. Augustine says we are engaged in a praiseworthy battle that acts to keep what is better from being overcome by what is worse. The struggle is to keep desire from conquering the mind and to keep lust from conquering wisdom. This is the steadfast peace which we ought to develop in ourselves, that what is better in you may be in charge of what is worse. The better part in you is the part in which God's image is found. The better part in you is the part where Christ reigns supreme. As we are transformed by the grace of Christ the King at work in us, we experience little by little within ourselves the peace of his reign. Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives peace do I give it. Christ offers us a more permanent peace if we would surrender to him. St. Leo the Great says, what is more king-like than to find yourself the ruler over your body, having surrendered your soul to God? What sort of king is this? He is the king who wants his subjects to be better, to be better not only for themselves, but for the least of their brothers and sisters. He is the king who desires that what is better overcomes that which is worse. What sort of king is this? He is just the sort of king that our world needs. Long live Christ the King.